Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lomachowskis. Today is the 8th of April um, 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, just before we uh, jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our GFD Bank website, and specifically our GFD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free guys to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. So... <clears throat> Um, as always, um, let's quickly have, have a, a quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Um, so that was the previous number. Uh, let me just quickly refresh this and uh, yeah, let's wait for this one to come through. <clears throat> So you can see that the total amount of deaths has risen, um, of course, together with the um, together with the total in infections. Um, the USA um, is already almost hitting 400,000. Um, probably, if with the same pace, they will be coming closer to half a million. But um, here you can see that Spain continues to stay in second place, overcoming Italy. Um, and uh, yep, for now, that's the kind of the situation, that's the table. Um, of course, um, it's uh, it's very sad that such things are happening right now. But I mean, I, we hope we can all plow through it. So let's see how the market are, uh, is reacting. So um, yesterday, looking at DAX here, uh, yesterday we saw uh, a, a, still a decent close at around 2.79%. Um, it remained above that uh, psychological 10,000 zone that I talked about and uh, also kind of closed above this uh, 10,280 zone though, and that I talked about. That was the low, That's the lowest point of 2018. So basically, in other words, for now, it there is a, a even if we see a bit of a decline here, uh, still as long as it remains above this upside, uh, uh, above this ten thousand territory, um, and of course above this little short-term tentative upside line here, then yes, we will continue targeting the upside. So. Um, Looking at the cash index right now and where it is trading at at this at this moment, um, before the open, it's currently sitting at around 10,340 10, zones. So basically, um, sitting comfortably, uh, not far from where it closed uh, yesterday. So in a way, for now, uh, we'll keep an eye on this one and. Uh, We'll see how um, if if the index can actually push further north again and overcome this uh, 10,590 territory, which is the high of yesterday. If it does overcome this, then yes, uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and the next potential target for us could be around that uh, 11,000 zone, or maybe just a little bit slightly above that 11,032 zone. So keep your eyes on that territory. Um, Jumping into FTSE 100, now here uh, yesterday I talked about this one and basically what I was saying that in order for us to get comfortable with higher levels, um, although the indices have moved higher at some point yesterday, um, 
uh, still um, the more comfortable level for us to, to after which we could consider the upside is this this 5815-16 territory basically near the highs of the uh, March 26th, 27th. Um, looking at the cash index right now we can see that the price is currently at around 5,669.70 territory um, so basically um, a little bit below uh, the yesterday's close um, so yep but still not all is lost here for the um, for the buyers we are very close to this barrier and if we do get a nice break above this then yes we will aim for our next potential target which is around the 6231 zone approximately there guys near the high of the 10th of March and then we'll take it from there for now we'll remain cautious um, maybe a little bit even cautiously bullish um, but if this by any chance starts drifting lower and drops below the 5352.50 territory here somewhere around around this territory zone um, uh, then yes we could um, aim for a bit of declines here for now it's uh, the downside is kind of slightly off the table I would say um, but we cannot really even get comfortable with the upside yet as well so basically we're waiting for that confirmation break here on the FTSE 100 uh, we need that uh, which is around the 5815 territory <clears throat> Now then, jumping into WTI oil, now here uh, the commodity drifted lower, dropped and closed below this 26.08 level. Um, of course, this is not really uh, looking good here for this commodity and uh, this 26.08 is the lowest point of 2016. I've mentioned this one a lot of times um, in my previous videos. So basically now the 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 kind of the, the everything changes a little bit here um and uh, what we're going to look at here is of course this 26.08 and if it uh continues to if it continues to hold and if it now acts as a very nice strong area of resistance then we could see something like this happening where we could see another drift back down towards that uh psychological 20 territory and uh, of course a drop below this uh 20 zone then yes, would confirm a forthcoming lower low and we could see even uh, further declines. However, for now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, today, we might be having, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the OPEC plus meeting. So uh, yes, something to today and tomorrow. Um, so keep your eyes on those guys. Keep your eyes on the outcomes and the headlines coming out of the, uh, those meetings. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be very careful. Probably the suggestion here is right now uh, to be very, very cautious. And uh, if you are, if you do want to trade here, well, I mean, definitely have a stop loss, guys, because and in general, always have a stop loss in place because, um, well, I mean, we could see some increased volatility and uh, we, uh, a lot of traders might get stopped out. So uh, that's why be very careful. Um, in terms of the upside here, uh, we would like to see a push above the high of uh, last week here, which is around the 29.11 zone. And then, yep, we could aim for a further, a further move to the upside for now. Um, it's As long as the price remains below the 26.08 level, we will remain uh, slightly, uh, or should I say cautiously bearish uh, than bullish. Okay, now then, um, jumping into another instrument here, and this one's going to be Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin, I talked about Bitcoin in the beginning of this week, and basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line taken from the high of the 24th of February, and of course to keep an eye on this upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March. So both lines are tentative. Uh, we should not be focusing on them too much. Uh, however, we just kept them on, I kept them on the chart, just to kind of for illustrative purposes. <clears throat> Now, you can see that we've managed to break this downside line, um, so basically it got violated so we can get rid of it, and of course, um, if we uh, the the more important fact is that we've managed to climb nicely above this above the high of the second of April, and uh, which is around the uh, seven thousand uh, two hundred and ninety two mark. So. As you can see, the crypto is now trying to push further north. The next potential target to consider is around the 7,630 zone. 
and uh, slightly above that we do have this 200 day EMA <clears throat> which also could play out nicely and uh, of course uh, our, the level to watch around there is the high of the uh, 12th of March which is roughly around the uh, 7969.70 territory approximately there so that's going to be our first target or should I say our main target because our first target is going to be around the 7630 um, for now we will continue aiming higher uh, slowly carefully cautiously because uh, don't get me wrong it's kind of really kind of, for now it's like gr grinding higher it's not really uh, let's say comfortably moving to the upside it's just uh, moving sideways slowly slowly so in a way, if something comes out in the market and uh, uh, changes the course uh, of this, uh, of this, then we, if we see a break of this upside support line and a drop below the uh, 6,631 zone, then yes, we will aim for some downside. For now, uh, we are going to be leaning a little bit more to the upside, unless this suddenly somehow changes and breaks this upside line, and then we'll uh, then we'll keep an eye on this little barrier here around the 6,631 zone which is not far from the uh, 21 EMA here on the daily chart which shown as the yellow line so keep your eyes on that one guys but again as I said for now we are still kind of aiming a little bit higher we do have some obstacles here important obstacles these EMAs the 100 and the 200 EMAs so let's see if those can can, can get reached and if we, if we, if they can, then, well, I mean, uh, after that, we'll take it from there. We'll see what he wants to do after. Um, now then, jumping into a few pairs, uh, NZDCH Chef. I haven't looked at this one for quite a while. I mean, you can see that the uh, my arrows have shifted a little bit, and this needs to be extended here. And what's interesting that previously I talked about this level, the uh, 0 0.5795 territory, uh, which. Uh, continue to play out as a nice area of resistance so as you can see the uh, the um the pair is kind of is trying to break this one but is struggling to close above it so in a way we're still kind of let's say keeping close eye on this one if we do get a nice daily close above this 0 0.5795 territory then yes we will aim for a bit of upside we'll aim for the 0 0.5931 zone or even going further north towards this um, towards the 0 0.6037 uh, territory or this downside line uh, but again for now if you can see that the pair is still struggling with uh, with closing above this above the zone, uh, closing a daily candle above the zone. Um, so yep, we'll continue monitoring that and. Uh, for now, of course, uh, the trend is still to the upside. I mean, we can just we can start drawing here something, but to be honest, all of these lines are going to be tentative. So let's not overcomplicate our life. Uh, what we're going to focus here on. Previously, I talked about this level, the 0 0.56 zone. Now, in a way, we can actually uh, lift this a little bit higher, and uh, we will consider the downside if we get a drop below this little level right here the 0 0.5705 zone so roughly around there guys and uh, this is what you could uh, keep an eye on if we do get a nice drop below this zone then yes uh, there is a possibility maybe to see a bit of declines uh, don't get me wrong we're not going to drag this one too much to the downside we're just going to probably aim for something around here maybe the near the low of the, uh, the 23rd of March which is around the 0 0.5511 uh, zone and uh, yep after that we would take it from there but long story short uh, for now we're careful here because on one hand yes it could drift a little bit higher it still has some room here uh, but we would like to see that uh, close above the uh, nice good close above the this barrier the 0 0.5795 zone and then we could aim for further acceleration to the upside up until this downside line um, USD CAD. Now here, uh, let me. Uh, you can see that the uh, the daily candle uh, dropped below this level that I talked about, um, and uh, this level I talked about uh, this week in the beginning of this week, and uh, basically this level is around the 1.3986, and this is what I was saying that if we get a nice 
break here and the close, then yes, we could consider further declines. Let me just jump into a four hour chart and see what's happening here. Um, so we actually did get a four hour candle close here, as you can see. But uh, this is where it sometimes happens the opposite way. So it quickly reversed back to the upside. And, and well, basically the whole focus kind of fell on the daily candle. So now probably looking at this picture and looking at this daily chart yes we will uh, pro I'll probably change my view here a little bit and uh, not only that a four hour candle we would like to see it close off uh, below this level but also a daily candle as well so you're looking at this picture I mean it's quite clear why because we got a false breakout and the kind of the pair quickly reversed back to the upside so basically we'll keep an eye on the daily chart if we see a close on the four hour candle yes uh, below this level then yes of course we will start considering the downside however we'll be very careful and wait until the kind of uh, we see a daily candle closing below below this and then if we do see something like that then yes we will aim for further declines uh, for now um, this uh, this formation this pattern right now you can probably understand it it's a it's a possible or should I say it's somewhat of a uh, descending triangle uh, again these according to all the textbooks textbooks uh, TA textbooks these tend to break to the downside however we'll be very careful and cautious because we've seen this happening several times in the opposite direction and uh, but still even if we do get a break above this um, above this downside line still we would like to see a push above the 1.4325 zone and then we could aim for higher levels again I do understand that we're missing out maybe a, little, a bit of a move here however um, as you can see it's a bit uh, moving sideways right now so uh, let's be very careful and cautious we would rather be care safe and, and safe than sorry um, now then Jumping into uh, GBP USD, quick mentioning here. So this is a daily chart as well. Um, I talked about this pair this, in the beginning of this week, and basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier here, the 1.2195, which continues to act as a fantastic area of support. Um, this is basically the lowest point of October 2019. However, even though we had a nice rebound, still to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels for us, we would need to see a push above the 1.2485 zone, and then we could aim for higher levels for now we're just observing this one we're not doing anything even with the downside we're taking a very conservative approach and waiting for a drop below the 1.1950 which is the uh, the near the lows of 2016 and uh, 2019 and uh, yep then we will aim for further declines for now uh, we're just observing this one GBP JPY um, I've talked about uh, this one yesterday and basically uh, we did get a nice close of the f uh, this is the similar story with like with USD CAD so we got a nice close of a uh, four hour candle above this barrier um, even we got a close above the 200 EMA but this is where um, it kind of decided to go either way the other way and and still closed um, a daily candle below this territory so this is where probably the same rule is going to apply on this on this pair as well so we although we're gonna if we see another close of a four hour candle above this barrier right here then yes uh, we will start considering the upside however keep your eyes on the daily candle as well because um, well I mean it's um, it could be a little bit tricky here because um, yes the pair it seems to be it seems that it wants to travel higher um, however this reversal happened uh, the uh, the reversal happened here um, probably that the yen in the yen buying has increased uh, as the uh, market slid yesterday a little bit to the downside in the uh, during the US session and uh, yep so the end buying people are started fl fleeing into the safe havens however right now this morning we're seeing a bit of uh, still uh, a bit of positivity in the futures market so now the gbp jpy pair is uh, trying to make its way up again however still we're keeping close eye on this uh, 200 ema um, of course on this barrier here uh, which is currently getting tested and uh, we'll keep an eye on the 200 ema if on this four hour chart if we get a nice strong push and another close above the 200 EMA then maybe this could lead to some higher levels but again we are not going to drag we're not going to drag this one too much to the upside we're just going to aim for the 137.21 zone which is the high of the uh, 10th of March and finally your USD um, this is another typical uh, story um, where the four-hour candle closed above this barrier but the 
daily candle remained below it so basically uh or now actually do I apologize it's still closed above it so this morning we're seeing a bit of a decline here uh okay so that's quite interesting oh, so this is where it, we should remain a little bit cautious now because it failed to move higher it found some resistance near this 100 ema on the four hour chart um, and then drifted lower now of course this arrow here is no longer uh, going to represent what the our, the our scenario uh, what we're going to do here right now is probably we'll take a very con uh, cautious approach in terms of the upside we'll wait for a push above the 1.0952 or even at least actually a push above the um, above the high of yesterday uh, which is around and let me just quickly put this one on the chart uh, which was around uh, 1.0926 zone. So if we do get a nice push above this, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and of course place the rate above the 100 EMA here on the four hour chart. However, be very careful near this zone because that that's this is where we have the 200 EMA on the, uh, on the four hour chart. And uh, that's why we will be very careful and slow in terms of targeting higher areas. Um, so if we do get a push above the high of yesterday and a push, a push above the uh, 100, 100 EMA here on the four hour chart and yes we will aim for a bit of upside but we'll remain very careful and cautious we'll have a tight stop loss um you decide what's comfortable for you guys yeah and uh yep but that's of course in terms of the the upside here but if in terms of the downside well i mean to be honest uh we would still prefer to see a drop below the 1.0777 zone here and only then aim for uh, further declines. Uh, the oldest territory here will be somewhat of a neutral one for us. So if the pair slides lower and starts moving around here, we will remain neutral. We need to see a drop below this level, below the 1.0777, and only then we will target the downside. However, uh, for now, maybe not all is lost here still for the bulls, um, but be very careful. We've managed to, like I said, drift back um, managed to drip back below the uh, 1.0888 zone so um, well I mean let's keep an eye on this one but again this is where I'm saying that for us to get comfortable with the slightly higher levels uh, would be a break above the 1.0926 zone so keep your eyes on this one that's, that's the high of yesterday and also coincides with the uh, 100 EMA on the uh on the four hour chart okay guys i really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching this video um thank you for all your support guys thank you for your likes and uh for the kind words uh that are left uh that come directly to me and uh, uh and uh yep that are left uh, under the videos but sometimes, uh, <laughs> but anyway, guys, I really appreciate that. And uh, I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay safe both health wise and market wise and uh, uh, join me or should I say catch me, catch my late video later on uh, that my traders tea time around 13, 15 GMT time, maybe a little bit after that. Um, and then, yep, we'll pay, I'll pick up on some of these instruments, some new ones, and we'll see how the market has performed during this time. Thank you very much, guys. And bye-bye.